everyone, this is Alex from Gains. Today I'm with Alex Nafis from Ocean Protocol. How are you doing, Alex? Doing really well. Thanks so much for having me on today. It's a pleasure. Another Alex in crypto, there's so many of them. Um, excited to learn about Ocean. It's a project that's been around for quite a while, and I would say it's actually a leader in what they do. So what are you guys doing at Ocean at a high level? Ocean Protocol has been around for a few years now, and Ocean is unlocking the Web3 data economy. So really giving data back to its owners and users, the people who actually own the data. So, you know, to date, we think of data as being siloed in these big hegemonic corporations where they're just selling your data behind your back and you don't know what's going on. So following a Web3 first principle, having that self-sovereign ownership over your data and being able to control it and use it and leverage it as you want. Ocean Protocol allows people to buy and share data seamlessly while preserving uh, that privacy. So I really like to think of it as, you know, using a traditional Web2 business, think of uh, Airbnb, uh, but instead of houses, you have data sets. So someone who has a data set could come and sell it on the market. Someone can come and uh, consume that data. And where it's different from an Airbnb, is uh, there's no intermediate area. It's just directly peer to peer on a, on this two sided marketplace. So how this actually gets done and, and what are the features of this ocean protocol? It's fourfold actually. The first one is the ocean marketplace itself. You know, we have the ocean protocol and then we have this ocean marketplace client or user interface that sits on top of ocean protocol. And this is where you can actually go and use this marketplace. And uh, there's hundreds of data sets uh, to date with 5 million euros, total value locked. And then uh, the second is the data token. So if I come in, uh, am on the supply side of the market, this is how I uh, uh, get access to uh, that supply side. So a consumer comes and buys a data token, and that gives them the, the right to, uh, to consume uh, that data set. And then the third thing is an initial data offering. So this is in and of itself, the fact of creating a data set on uh, you know, the supply side. So instead of an IPO or an ICO, you know, this is the act of selling that data set, which creates the aforementioned uh, data token. And then uh, the fourth thing is uh, compute to data, uh, which is a, a feature within Ocean Marketplace, uh, which allows to keep your data on premise on the supply side and allow uh, algorithms can, to come and execute uh, the algorithm on top of your data set while uh, preserving that data privacy. Cool. That sounds quite interesting, but um, it might remain a bit theoretical for some people. So do you have some concrete examples of how this works and what kinds of data can one supply or see on the marketplace, for example? We launched our marketplace in Q4 of 2020. So this was the grand inception of rolling the ball out to the world and allowing uh, these data practitioners, these uh, machine learning experts, these uh, people who are building these algorithms to actually go out and start using uh, Ocean Protocol. So as mentioned, hundreds of data sets, uh, whether that's Amazon e-commerce uh, data someone has, uh, whether this is driver, uh, autonomous car driver, machine learning recognition on what are cars, what are people, what are bikes on the road, and the list goes on and on. So it's a generalized arbitrary marketplace. So anyone, excuse me, anyone with any arbitrary data set uh, can come and uh, post on it. What's really exciting though, is when you can come and sell this data is it's totally different from the existing thought or methodology around the big data companies. You can think of these ideas as little businesses almost, or in, in our vision, these are big turning into big businesses that people can turn their data into an asset on their balance sheet, which was previously unavailable to them. Cool. Very interesting. And I'm wondering who are the entities that supply the data? Are they mostly companies with lots of data available on their customers, businesses? Because we hear all the time that we as users, as individuals, we just generate data just by existing on the internet. But it seems maybe a bit hard to harness that data and just sell it also as an individual. Maybe people want aggregated data. And so we are curious about how it works. This is what's so powerful about the ocean marketplace. It is such a flexible and it does allow for any arbitrary data set uh, to be published. So it's uh, today, like who has valuable data? And the, the real answer is 
to this is uh, everybody. And what we're trying to do is to incentivize those entities that do have valuable data to publish on open ocean marketplace. So this could, we have a consumer data. Someone is a published data set on ocean marketplace. They have consumer data and they're a business, right? And they've scraped all the personal identifiable information off of it. Uh, and they're providing data set. Uh, we have another group of people they've joined forces and they're building, um, trading signals, a data set for buying and selling of crypto. And then you have solo practitioners that uh, just have, uh, say it like weather data. So you see a full range of whether from big businesses that, you know, their users have opted in and allowed, you know, for that data to be bought and sold and, and the scraping of that PII off of it, publishing on data sets. We have groups of, or collectives of data practitioners banding together and selling data. And we have individual uh, practitioners uh, selling data. All right. So how does the Ocean token is integrated? How does it come into play? What are the various incentives for holders, uh, you know, staking? Do they make some APR? Is, do they get a part of the fees from the platform? The Ocean token is the fuel of the Web3 data economy. And what this means is it is the medium of exchange token and utility token for uh, the buying and selling of data user supplies the data set, how do they arrive at exchange? So uh, they use this agreed upon token, uh, the ocean token. So that's uh, on the utility of the ocean market. And then people also have the ability to uh, stake on data. So as mentioned, once you publish a data set, you have this IDO and you have, and if they've chosen um, dynamic or available pricing as opposed to fixed pricing, you now can stake on that data set to get a uh, portion of the fees, just like being an LP in say uh, sushi swap or uniswap these are actually a uh, balancer proxy contracts and then a uh, more generalized staking is involved as well you know hey you can go stake on uniswap compound uh cream.finance opendao and a few other you know this is uh open permissionless ethereum erc 20 token and so you know you can go stake uh wherever those are supported and then the third thing uh is governance so this is what I get really excited about right now, the uh, ocean token has the governance ability to uh, participate in the ocean DAO. I'm very interested in the ocean DAO. You guys have a very active and functional DAO, which is not an easy thing to do. You have really an active community. Uh, everyone also uses the word community and real communities are actually hard to come by. I'm very interested to know how uh, it started why you decided to add governance to the token and what does the DAO decide on? At first we have, you know, into the traditional world, we have these structural hierarchical organizations. A problem with this is those that contribute the value to that network don't necessarily get rewarded. So we're in a shareholder economy. It's the early investors, it's the founders, it's the, you know, 10 to 15% employee equity pool. And uh, those that create value in that network the stakeholders don't get rewarded. So the Uber driver, the Airbnb host, they don't get any equity for the, and they're the people actually uh, contributing to the network. In a web three world with blockchains, you have this amazing thing, which is verifiability and uh, trustlessness. So if someone contributes arbitrary proof of work, proof of action, you can be wholly re re rewarded pro rata for your network marketplace activity, which is a super powerful uh, narrative and even more in a, in a societal structure, we see the world transitioning to populism when capitalism hasn't really uh, worked for us. So this is a new take on capitalism where, Hey, not just the top get rewarded, the shareholders get rewarded, but all stakeholders in this, you know, community capitalism, stakeholder ownership economy is uh, super powerful. And this is what crypto networks do and how these crypto networks organize are through DAOs. So uh, decentralized autonomous organizations are ways for coordination. So instead of your hierarchical coordination, it becomes flat. And through this, you hope to solve a uh, human coordination failure. So how can these entities all over the world that are contributing value and getting rewarded for it, uh, for how much they're contributing, how do they actually coordinate and how do they come together and get on mission uh, alignment? The, the idea, uh, with Ocean, since Ocean is publicly traded, anyone can get access. So it's permissionless. You just buy some Ocean or you sell a data set and you can earn it. 
Uh, so whatever uh, way you go about earning your ocean. Uh, and so now that you're a stakeholder by, uh, you know, earning it, contributing that network marketplace activity of selling your data or, you know, buying it, uh, now you have a seat at the table. Now you can contribute to the government. So we do only focus on grant proposals. So Ocean DAO is a grant DAO as opposed to, um, you know, some of these other DAOs in the crypto ecosystem that are voting on a uh, core protocol change. So with this grant style, you know, why are we only focused on this? Short and sweet of it is we have the ocean protocol and if we're able to fund grants that contribute a positive ROI to the ocean ecosystem, it can create what's called as uh, the, the web three self-sustainability loop. Token holders can vote on projects. They can get an ocean Dow grant, let's say $10,000. Uh, and they're able to contribute, let's say $50,000 worth of value that in excess can now go and fund more protocols, projects, and grants that can contribute a positive ROI back on to Ocean. And if you can do this at scale, it creates this really incredible self-sustainability. So what are these grants? What are these projects? Who are these people building that can create positive ROI for Ocean? Uh, so these are building apps or integration on top of Ocean. So that could be something like making a, a new marketplace or building a uh, mobile wallet for data tokens, and then unleashing data. So you're an entity or you know some entities uh, that have some valuable data, so you're going to go champion, be an evangelist, and get those data sets on Ocean Marketplace. Third thing is community or developer outreach. Uh, fourth thing is improvements to Ocean Core software or documentation. And then the fifth thing is uh, improvements to the DAO itself. So these are all areas and activities that um, you, know, you can get a grant for within Ocean that you can go and contribute some positive ROI back to Ocean ecosystem. I'd be curious, maybe give us a concrete example. What's the most interesting projects you've seen on the DAO? There's tons of amazing projects going on, uh, whether that's building mobile wallets or building car autonomous vehicle data sets, or if you're a physiologist creating AI recognition on like the human, checking out your skeletal structure. There's just so many projects that are focused on unlocking data inside of Ocean DAO. To give some stats on the Ocean DAO itself. So, since uh, in the first six rounds, we're on, uh, we're just starting Ocean DAO round nine, but uh, we've had 90 proposals sub submitted, uh, well over 600 voters. Uh, we've hosted about 30 community town halls, over, what is it now, like almost 30 million Ocean tokens voted, and around like 70 projects that have actually been funded inside of the DAO. So, there's a lot of activity going on. Wow, quite impressive. And Fair enough on the answer regarding the most impressive one. Is there anything else you'd like to mention about the DAO? Yeah, so uh, DAO rounds are monthly. So if you're interested in building for the Web3 data economy, you can come and submit a proposal at the start of every month. Right now, it's on the first Tuesday of every month. For round Ocean DAO round nine, we have $300,000 USD available for grants. You know, the idea is to grow Ocean DAO round over round because this is how it arrives at you know, the self-sustainability that we were talking about earlier. And of that, 30% is earmarked for new projects. So if you're a new project, you don't necessarily have to compete with uh, those that are returning and really got some notches under the belt. So uh, encouraged to come learn, come start shipping. Uh, we have an incredible co collaborative community. We have Ocean Dow Town Halls every Wednesday at 3 p.m. GMT. And uh, you can check out all this information on oceanprotocol.com slash DAO. So encouraged to come uh, dive in. You know, outside of uh, my excitement and our excitement for Ocean Protocol and Ocean DAO, getting involved in DAOs in and of themselves. You know, this is a, a rare paradigm shifting time where, you know, this technology hasn't existed before. And, you know, just, hey, how do we be internet and digitally native web3 native participants and how do we sol solve for this uh coordination failure and this is um you know so, so really highly encouraged um hey if you're not that passionate about data come like join in and see how a new organizational structure uh operates and i think that's um you know also very exciting and then and then you'll get ramped up to get fired up about data uh because you know i think it's also pretty cool thank you alex for your enthusiasm was a great energy. All the links again will be in the description for anyone who wants to check it out. Drop a like, feel free to write a comment, ask a question to Alex or share your thoughts on this interview and share it around with your friend as well. And subscribe for more awesome interviews in the crypto and Web3 ecosystem. Thanks again, Alex, and I'll see you soon. Awesome. Thanks so much.